right, there it is. It's official. I actually hit top 1,000 in the Valor event, which I gotta say, I'm kind of surprised about. I mean, as the Valor event was closing, I saw that my name was in the top 1,000, so I'm not necessarily surprised today that I'm getting Thor Ragnarok as a 4-star, but um, it, just in general, I really didn't go that hard in this event to hit top 1,000. Uh, it doesn't tell me my exact rank here, but uh, I believe it was around 650. It was somewhere in that, uh, you know, six to 700 range. Um, and yeah, got a four-star Ragnarok as a result. So today I kind of just want to talk a little bit about uh, the actual event itself and uh, give you guys my, my thoughts on it and how maybe it can hopefully be improved going forward. Um, so, I mean, first off, yeah, I mean, I, I like the event, of course. I got I got four star Thor Ragnarok here, which I didn't have before, right? I didn't get him in the arena. Um, I actually wanted to get this guy in the arena too, which is uh, it's it's kind of just a nice little coincidence that yeah, I didn't even have to put that that grind time in. Uh, but what about uh, the event just as a whole? Well, the event uh, I think was really good. Um, I the the best part about the event, in my opinion, was um, the Valor store itself. I'm a huge fan of when Kabam does something like they did with the, the Glory store here, where they let people pick and choose exactly what they want to purchase with the resource that they earned. Um, because there's, no, there's really no way that Kabam could just have one resource that they give out that the entire community is going to be happy with. We just saw it with the Cyber Monday deals that came through, where although, honestly, I think the deals were, were good, it, it just it was the same exact uh, Odin deal here, uh, also adding in a 5-star Awakening Gem and two Tier 4 Class Catalyst Crystals, but I can understand how it probably felt bad for a lot of people who didn't necessarily need those Tier 4 Class Catalyst Crystals, um, even though the vast majority of people playing this game desperately needs those things, uh, there's a bunch of us very passionate players who uh, we kind of have enough of those and I'm sure a lot of people would have preferred if they can swap those out for some other type of resource. So yeah, it's, it's always better when Kabam uh, lets us pick uh, exactly what we want, or at least for most people, I'm sure some people, they're just, they don't want to think about it and everything like that, but for me personally, um, I love thinking about it, I love thinking about, okay, what do I actually need, what's going to help me advance in this game the most? Uh, you know, thinking about the future, thinking about, okay, there's a certain champion coming and I'm going to need some extra resources to rank them up as soon as I get them, so let me kind of plan it out here and there. Uh, where else am I getting these? Let me compare the prices and stuff like that. So uh, for me, that's really enjoyable, and I, I think for a lot of people, they really enjoyed that, that aspect of the store as well. Um, so Valor Store is awesome. It's perfect. Uh, the Tier 4 Basics could have been a little bit cheaper, but other than that, I think it was great. Uh, Alright, so let's talk about something else outside of uh, the Valor Store, though, because there's a couple other areas that I really enjoyed before I get to the stuff that, uh, you know, could have been improved and hopefully will be improved going forward. So, the next thing is that uh, I just like that certain things, it, it was just kind of automatic, right? There was extra things to do in the game, but some of it, some of it was just... You know, you played the game the normal way you play the game, and you just got extra rewards as a result, right? So playing the, the uh, four-star featured arena, you got some valor from both the milestone rewards and the ranked rewards. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you didn't have to hit the top rank rewards. Of course, the more you played, the better rewards you got and everything. But um, you didn't necessarily need to hit the top ranks just because it was included in each one of those milestones. So uh, I think that was great. Uh, I mean, I was playing arena anyway, and it, maybe if you weren't an, an arena grinder, maybe that gave you a little bit of extra incentive to play the arena uh, and then get some of these other rewards that uh, you may not normally be getting. Um, so that was awesome. It also felt really good in the, uh, the monthly event quest because even though the harder difficulties, they kind of already have pretty good rewards, especially for the difficulty. Uh, there's pretty good rewards in, in master mode, especially when you look at uh, everything that's included in like the, uh, the individual quests and stuff like that. But if you look at something like normal mode here, I've been going through normal pretty much since I started the game, and I don't know if I ever stopped. It might be like one or two months where I didn't do normal 100%, but I normally do normal 100% just to grab the tier 1 alpha catalyst, uh, and then like some of the, the units from the actual quest and stuff like that with my spare energy. Um, so as long as I don't have to pop energy refills, I, I've pretty much completed normal every single time. And it really doesn't feel that good. The rewards, I mean, for where I'm at in the game, yeah, these rewards are not that big of a deal. One premium hero crystal, some, you know, some tier 2 basic catalyst. I don't care about this stuff all that much, right? Um, but 
when they included some uh, you know some valor in in the the in chapter three it made it feel a whole heck of a lot better to be like okay you know what I'm doing this not just for these these kind of rinky dink rewards and a tier one alpha uh, I'm doing it for those rinky dink rewards a tier one alpha and then some valor that I can take over to the valor store um, so yeah that just it, it made it feel a whole lot better um, the solo events were uh, kind of a hit and a miss at the same time. Uh, I mean, I really appreciated that it was uh, it was done in the same way as uh, hero use, where you got points for um, whoops, you got points for uh, just killing an enemy with a certain star-rated champion, and then you got some points for you know finishing uh, the fight with with a with a special type of attack, whether it was a light attack, medium attack, heavy, uh, special one, bleed, that kind of thing. Uh, I think that most times it was cool. Uh, it made you just think a little bit about the game a little bit differently, and uh, it was it was it was not like certain 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 ones like finishing with a light attack or a medium attack. I'd say they weren't like they weren't annoying, right? It was like a little bit annoying eventually, right? I'm glad that it's not here permanently, um, but for the most part, it wasn't too bad. But then you got ones where it was like, okay, finish them with incineration damage. It's like, what? Come on, man. How many champions actually incinerate in this game? Like, do you really expect me to do this, right? Uh, I mean, most days, I if it was something weird like that, I would just completely forget about it. I would just play Arena, you know, depending on how much Arena I played, maybe I would hit, like, the, the deeper milestones. Maybe I wouldn't. I didn't care. Uh, I mean, I guess that's I guess that's cool for the people competing. They have to really kind of think about it for you know the people going for those top ranks of like okay, what's the most efficient way to play and, and kill enemies with incinerate? And I think what they did was use like a like a low level Hyperion because they wanted to go through low level content that only costs one energy per move, and they had to you know uh, kill enemies with with Hyperion Special One kind of thing. So I think. You know, maybe maybe it was maybe it was good in that sense for for the competition aspect of it, but I I personally did not enjoy it, uh, and I would prefer it to you know to keep some of those more unique, uh, those more unique challenges out of there and just stick to the the basics like light attack, medium attack, heavy attack, special one, special two, that kind of thing. Uh, keep that other stuff out of there. That's that's just my my opinion on it. Uh, but overall, like like the the, the soul event, man, you get such good rewards. Uh, it, it matched the same rewards. Um, for, like first off, the ranked rewards they they were different and they were great. But uh, let me just talk about the milestone rewards, just because not everybody was hitting the uh, the ranked rewards. So they matched these events, and that means that on the third uh, tier of the milestones, you got a level one revive, and this is a super undervalued uh, reward. Uh, I mean, especially when we had that event every day for like a month, that's an extra thirty level one revives. Think about how much that could save you. How many how many units that can save you going through Labyrinth of Legends, for example, uh, or maybe just going through you know a, a higher difficulty than maybe you were able to in a, in a certain quest or, or become uncollected or wherever you were trying to use these things. Uh, it's super valuable to get these extra level one revives. So yeah, for a lot of people, I think that's a huge deal, uh, and that could definitely. I mean, you, you can get through Labyrinth of Legends without spending any units during events like that, basically. As long as you're willing to take your time, you can get through Labyrinth of Legends like 100%. Uh, just, just time it out with each one of these events like that, right? So that was great. Um, Alright, let's talk about some stuff that I feel like could be improved. And the first thing I want to talk about is the actual uh, bounty missions. So we don't have bounty missions in-game anymore. The closest thing that we have is Modox Lab. And Modox Lab is a greatly improved yet similar type of, uh, of of game mode. So Modox Lab, the biggest difference be for between the bounty missions and Modox Lab in my opinion is that Modox Lab is on an 8 hour timer whereas the Valor bounties uh, were on a 6 hour timer. 6 hours, it's it's just not good. It's not enjoyable. Uh, I mean, it, it's, you're in there too much. Um, there's, there's a couple of downsides to it. The first is that you're just in there too much, man. It's taking up too much of your time when you want to be doing something else in game. And yes, the rewards are good, the rewards are worth it. Um, but, but give like the same total amount of rewards, but then make, just make us do it less times, you know? So, um, give, give out, like make, just make it two or three times a day. Even three times a day, even at an eight hour cooldown. Sometimes it gets to be too much, and just don't feel like doing it, right? Um, but it's it's much better, and I, I would not complain if we saw the next Valor event, uh, or the next Valor type event. Uh, I would not complain at all if it was on an 8-hour timer. I think that's much better. Uh, I think it makes it so that you can 
uh, get a full night's sleep without uh, having to worry about like, oh no, I'm missing out on these rewards, which I mean, I didn't care about. Like I said, I, I wasn't really going for, for a top spot, so I didn't worry about it. I didn't, uh, I didn't lose any sleep over uh, <laughs> the Valor requests or anything like that. Uh, the, other, the other bad part about those missions is it was very confusing on how it actually started up. Um, I mean, people people understood. People caught on pretty quick. Okay, you just claim your valor. You hold all of your valor, and then you claim it when there's no current uh, bounty mission uh, active. But that wasn't necessarily working all the time. And I could claim, you know, a hundred thousand plus valor and not start a bounty mission. And then someone else can claim like two thousand valor, and they get to start it. And that just, I don't know, it just didn't feel very good. Uh, I, I would prefer if it was just automatic on a timer, just like Modox Lab here, for every eight hours, a new mission would start up, that kind of thing. Uh, I, would, I would definitely prefer that. It's also very nice that Modox Lab does not cost any energy. Uh, I would like to see that going forward, too, for, for the other events. But I understand that, uh, you know, Kabam kind of wants us to spend energy. So, yeah, I'm not holding my breath on that one. Uh, if some of these other improvements can, can be changed, I'd still be very happy with it overall. Because, again, the event as a whole was still really good. It's just these, these couple of little minor tweaks that uh, I feel like could be improved. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is the actual rewards themselves. Um, I mean, like, overall, all the rewards were great and everything. Uh, it was fantastic that I got this four-star uh, Thor Ragnarok. But uh, what I feel like could be even better than rewarding uh, champions for the top ranks rewards something else and I don't know exactly what that something else is maybe some some shards or uh, you know, catalysts or whatever but I think for a lot of people if they wanted four star Thor Ragnarok because there's only a thousand people that got him right I think for a lot of people they would just do the Thor Ragnarok arena where the top 800 people get him anyway they don't have to worry about you know playing the entire month to get the champion um, and it, I mean, if they, I feel like it'd be it'd be more of an incentive for the, for the competition if it was like, okay, the top one thousand get a tier two alpha catalyst or something like that, or or you know, a handful of uh, of basic catalysts that would get me going, man. If you gave out like ten tier four basics, oh man, I'm going for that top one thousand for sure. Um, but something like that, right? And the top ten thousand got a three star Thor Ragnarok. I mean, he was already available. First off, in the arena, uh, and then second through the, I think it was uh, Marvel Insider, which technically I don't think that's worldwide. I think there's like a U.S. restriction that some people get around anyway, but uh, so maybe we can't count that necessarily. But I would just like to see the rewards at the end changed up a bit. Uh, I think the top ten and the and the, the top reward, I think those were good. I think getting a, you know a free five star character that we can't get through the arena at the moment at least, I think that's really good. Um, but, you know, the other rewards, they, they just felt, uh, I don't know, it just didn't feel quite fitting for, for, you know, working over an entire month to get this reward. Uh, again, I'm very happy because I did not grind for Thor Ragnarok, so it worked out, it worked out great for me. No complaints, uh, for, for my actual reward, but for a lot of people, they already got this champion. So, yeah, I can, I can see, uh, from their perspective that... Uh, eh, I don't want to compete, you know, like, just, just give more incentive to compete, basically. I want to see that, uh, that competition thriving in, in this game. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my opinions on the event. Overall, once again, I loved it, but just a couple little, little minor tweaks here and there that if Kabam brings it back, uh, you know, I think could just elevate the events to the next level, basically. So, yeah, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know how you, uh, ended up. Did you get, uh, top 1,000? Did you get the top, top 10,000? Uh, did you get the top 10? Were you the person at number one who maybe had some questionable activity going on in your account? I don't know, but uh, let me know, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.